What is up guys and welcome to a landscape design SketchUp tutorial or a landscape SketchUp design tutorial, whatever, doesn't matter. You have for landscape, you have for design, you have for the SketchUp. What? You're more than likely a landscaper who's looking to move over to an AutoCAD system um, if you're not already are or you want to come over to SketchUp uh, system and you found me guys honestly i really recommend sketchup if you're a landscaper it is absolutely phenomenal um from start to finish giving you 3d renderings not realistic but there are 3d renderings there's other sister programs you can add on uh where you can you can make your sketchups a lot more realistic but sketchup is a whole beautiful stuff so okay obviously i'm going to take you through my process of designing um from start to finish giving a client a full-on project um and design for them um so yeah come along with me my creativity is obviously my creativity i don't expect you to copy me in that aspect wait a minute who are you at all um but it's more the basics about it so learning the tools the hotkeys um how to actually just make your life a bit easier when it comes to designing so here we go. Obviously, you're going to need SketchUp 2017 first and foremost. So you're going to download SketchUp 2017. So you're going to go to Google. You're going to type in SketchUp. And see, I've already got it there. SketchUp download 2017. Hit the enter key. Go into, it's usually the first one there, downloading all the versions. And then once you're in there, you're going to download the SketchUp Make 2017. 2019, 2018, they give you a free window period, but you're gonna to have to end up paying. They do have a lot of professional tools in there, but it's not necessary. If you're gonna start off, rather start off with a free version, see if you whether you like it or not, and then you can go on to actually purchasing it. So SketchUp Makeup 2017, SketchUp Make 2017, download the Windows or the Mac. Uh, so I've got a Windows, so I downloaded, I've already done it all. Um, but yeah, download it, set it up, install it, and then, um, yeah, get to get to this window, guys. If you do not know how to install SketchUp by now, comment below and I'll come and hold your hand and we can do it together. Um, it really is simple. It's the new age. What's the age of technology? We should all know how to be downloading and installing by now. Alrighty, so we're here, we're in SketchUp 2017 now. Just a couple of things, guys don't get too panicked if your SketchUp does not look like mine at the moment, it'll get there. Uh, on the right hand side here, you may not have this tray here. All you need to do is default tray, hide tray. If it's not there, you see it's gone. Default tray, show tray, it comes back. So that is that. And then along the way, we'll show you some hotkeys. Another thing quickly, go to Windows model info and depending where you are in the world is either metric or, or imperial units systems whatever you want to call it uh we use here yeah, in south africa meters centimeters and meters millimeters centimeters and meters so you choose your preference and um yeah just click on it so if it's inches click on it if it's are uh, you we use meters click on meters there's nothing to save here don't click any other buttons once it's clicked it's clicked and then just exit and now you'll be rolling with those units throughout the whole program. Okay, what else? Yes, then just another setup, styles here. There's a whole bunch of styles here um, that you get to choose from. I've already chosen mine, the default style, I prefer it. I think this is what it comes with. It's a simple style, if I'm not mistaken, start off like that. Um, I just prefer default style when you do end up printing it, it, it does the best job. So yeah, that's that now. Guys, obviously you've been to a client or you're going to your client and you need to gather a brief from them. Uh, we do this in a form of a questionnaire. Questions, do you want a water feature? Do you want a fire pit? Uh, do you want a seating area? Do you want paving? Um, you know, certain things, what do you want as a client? Uh, do they like straight lines or curves? What plants and trees do they want and not want? Colors they want and not want? What sort of themes do they want? Some clients actually don't even know what themes they are. They'll just show you a picture and say, see the Mediterranean or rustic or modern or so forth. This is information you need to gather from the client in order to 
you know, supply them with their amazing dream garden. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you've been there. I've already done this for the client that I am going to be designing for. And once you're there, also you need to take measurements. Uh, some crucial measurements would be where trees are that are not going to come down. Um, you know, you don't have to go too wild on the, the measurements, but you do need a fair amount of measurements. And I'll show you why you don't need to go wild on the measurements now. Uh, there's a nice little trick that I learned uh, through working through another company, which is extremely helpful. So we're going to get into that now. But you're going to do the client survey. You're going to get the questionnaires. You're going to get the measurements and photos and videos. You've got to do this. Um, otherwise, how else are you going to supply an amazing design? Uh, so yeah. So let's get started. The first point of call is obviously mapping out the existing house and property where your client lives. Now, how do you do that? Because uh, I just told you, you don't have to measure everything. So you're going to go to Google. You're going to go to Maps. You're going to click on Google Maps and then you are going to California, type in their address. I don't know how to spell address. How do you spell address? Is that correct? Where it takes us. No way. Okay. But anyway, so you're going to type in their address and you're going to find their house. Obviously, I'm not going to do it for privacy reasons. Let's just say this is John So's house here. Is this even a whoop whoop avenue? Whoop whoop. Hey, it's any time now. I think I need to upgrade my laptop. Bit. Okay, so you're going to find John So's house. Let's do this house over here. It sets this house. What you're going to do is you're going to go and snip it. Find the snipping tool, click on it, new and just snip that house there then you're going to file it you're going to save it in save it in your 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 wherever you need to save it you're going to come back to the sketcher program okay so what we're going to do is we're going to import it file import i've got it saved here um, okay, if nothing pops up, go to the right hand side of this thing here and just say all supported images and type image type. There we go, it pops up capture, import, and then okay, you can see we're on a multi dimensional plane at the moment. You just wanted to see it from a 2D perspective. So at this point in time, press V. V should take you to a bird's eye view. If it doesn't do that, what you got to do is you got to go to Windows, you got to go to Preferences, then you got to go to Shortcuts. What you're going to do is you're going to type in Camera and uh, Camera Top. It's Top, I know it's Top, QRST, Standard Views. There we go, over there. See, mine's already assigned as V. So if you don't have an assigned V key there, just in your shortcut here, type in V, add the plus, it'll go straight into there. Say, okie dokie, and sorted, finish. And then next time you press V, you should come to a, a, a top view, a, perspective, a bird's eye view. So, so, you've imported this here, right? Awesome, now we're gonna draw all the fixed structures there, the, that, the housing walls, the roofs, the boundary walls, um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Anywhere paving here currently exists. Uh, any major trees, if there are any trees, but we'll get there. So let's go ahead and let's actually, um, let's go ahead and let's actually uh, draw over this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press L. So sorry about that. Press L, that's the hotkey for this line tool here. This line tool here does straight lines from A to B. You click once, find where you wanna do and click again. Click once, click again, click. There we go, you see. When it highlights in the middle there, that means that we have four sides joined, or three sides, could be three sides as well, something like this. And you want that. If it is not highlighted, guys, it's gonna cause problems later down the line. Make sure they're highlighted. Obviously, you can't highlight it with two lines. That's just, don't be silly. But um, let's go along with it, and I'll show you 
what I mean later on. So let's 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 draw all these boundary walls in. So first off the bat, you see this is a pink line. That shows you that it is perpendicular. It's exactly 90 degrees to that first line over there. 90 degrees. That's what you want a lot of the time. And that's because a lot of homes are built on 90 degree axis. I mean, there are a couple of terrible builders out there, but majority of the time they are 90 degrees. So that is going to be a lifesaver later on. It automatically clicks in there. And uh, yeah, so just carry on sketching everything up. You see it highlighted again. Now we can't see anything underneath. So how the hell are we supposed to, you know, fill out the rest of the house? Well, click it, press delete. Spacebar takes you back to the, the pointer tool, this pointer tool here. So it's a select tool. So anything that you need to select and you need to click on, let's delete this guy. We click on him and you press delete. So spacebar takes you there. Once again, if it's not a hotkey, go Windows, Preferences, then go Shortcuts. Find the select key, type in select, uh, edit select, tool select, there we go. See, it's a space bar. You would type in there, space, press plus, and then it will go there. Oh no, let's exit all of this. Do that. And um, yeah, then that, and then assign that special key. So you need a select key and then a line key. Oh, let's carry on sketching up, guys. If you are at that point, great. I'll see you in the next tutorial in part dos, uno, dos, 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 two, three, part two of this. Um, if you're not there yet, get there and then meet me in the next tutorial. Cheers for now, guys.